Hello everyone and welcome to our first practical session in Scratch with ProRes RAW. So we're here at the startup screen of Scratch and uh, let me give you a quick tour through the three different kinds of settings that we have. User settings, system settings and project settings. So the user settings mainly determine the look and feel inside of Scratch. And the most important thing here is how you change these numeric parameters. Because unlike every other tool that you might know, in Scratch you change these parameters by clicking and then circling around a parameter, just like turning an encoder, right? And the speed in which this happens is determined by these two values here, the normal gearing at 75 and shift gearing at 25, which means when I just click inside the parameter and dial around, it goes with this speed, 75, and when I hold shift and do the same, it goes much slower, as you can see. Now you can always just click the parameter and dial in a value like 0 0.3, hit enter, and it does that, or you can use it to reset the value to its default, something like this, okay? So this is how you change numeric values in Scratch. This is quite important to know. Okay, and go to the system settings. And here in the general tab, you can select where to store your Scratch users, projects and settings. You can even define your own startup logo. So you won't see this assimilate logo here, but rather your own logo that you might want to put there. And most importantly, the SDI settings here. If you open up this dialog here at the top, you can select your device. Right now, I only have uh, two virtual devices, Scopelink and Nope Omniscope. Uh, but in this drop down, you would also find your Declan card or your Kona card or your IO4K or whatever Blackmagic AJA or Bluefish 444 device you are using to output SDI. Next to the drop down, you would enable it and then down here select your resolution, frame rate, your format, and also enable one output channel. This is quite important. Please don't forget that. Okay. Other than that, uh, you can enable your grading panel of choice in here. And now I'll just fast forward to the advanced tab because there's one setting in there, uh, which I recommend to enable, especially if you're a scratch beginner. So down here, you can search for that setting, search for color. And here we have the disable color management setting, which we will enable. Why do we do that? Well, Scratch's color management is pretty intelligent. So when you have a shot and you debayer it to, let's say, Panasonic v Gamut and V-Log, that's fine, but Scratch at the same time knows that your display is probably sRGB or Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So what Scratch's color management will do is take that log image and auto-convert it to Rec. 709. So essentially, you are debiring to a log space, but you won't be looking at a logarithmic image. And that might be confusing. And so for starters, I recommend to turn this setting on in order to turn color management off. Okay, and that takes us to the project settings. Now, uh, in order to look at the project settings, let's just create a new project. Give it a name. Let's call this ProRes Raw Workflows and hit create. And now we set the media directory. I'll set that to my footage folder here. And the media directory is basically the directory that all your footage is supposed to be inside. Now you can, of course, import footage from any location. Uh, that's no problem. But in case you have to move your project, let's say it resides on an external drive and you have to move it from a Mac workstation to a Windows workstation, then the absolute path changes because as we know, Windows uses uh, drive letters and so on. But also, if you just move the folder to a different location, then you would have to relink the footage. And you can do this by just telling Scratch in here in the project settings, hey, your media folder has moved. It's not here anymore, it's somewhere else. And you just point it to the new location and Scratch will relink all the footage automatically. And that's the advantage of keeping your footage inside that media directory. But you can import from any location and you can of course also render to any location. Um, but then you might have to relink manually. 
Okay, then we have uh, these settings here and they are basically defaults for new timelines created. You can change these defaults at any time and you can also change any timeline at any time. That's one of the great things about Scratch. It never ever nails you down to a certain setting. You can literally change anything at any time. Most of the things, even while the clip is playing, it's pretty amazing. So let's say we are doing 1080, 25 frames like that. And down here, our output data format, also the default, we can of course output in many other flavors. But right now, let's say we're creating dailies for editing. So we will likely be outputting a Rec 709 with a Gamma 2.4. Okay, let's leave it at that, hit OK. If we ever have to change the project settings, we can just select it here in the list, go to project settings, and we're back here. Okay, so let's enter into the project. Now, as you can see, the import clips button is already lighting up in blue, but we won't do that just yet. As you can see, we have these tabs here at the bottom, and I want to quickly explain to you what these are for. First tab, is the construct tab and in here you do media management so you load clips you organize clips you conform timelines etc stuff like that that's what you do in here so we can create timelines here um, and let me quickly create a filler color bar so we have some footage in here and now as you can see the edit and color fix tab became available in the edit tab, you can do, well, surprise editing, but also audio syncing. And you can load a reference to compare your conformed timeline with a reference clip. We won't spend too much time in here. The color fix tab, as the name suggests, allows you to do color. We will be in this tab uh, quite a bit in this video and also the coming ones. And the render tab allows you to render out your timeline in various different resolutions, frame rates, color spaces, formats, whatever you want, you can build an output tree here, which we'll do also in one of the next videos. Now, back to the construct tab. Let me quickly remove all timelines but the first. Okay, and let's import some footage. So click the import clips button and navigate to my folder with the ProRes RAW files in it. Now here's the first thing that you might stumble over. As you can see, I have one clip in here, take seven. However, if I quickly alt tap into Finder, we can see that there's actually a bunch more clips in there, six all in all. And that's what you're seeing here. There's a six in brackets because Scratch by default collapses sequentially numbered files. And to change this, you can just disable the collapse button here and now shift or control select multiple clips and import them. Or the other thing that you could do, because the collapse thing is really just a viewing thing, if I'm being honest, you can enable the select folder option here, like such. And from this point onwards, just select the folder with the files, hit open. And now Scratch is asking us whether we want to change our project settings and the settings of our current timeline to match those of the first clip to be imported. Let's hit yes here. Okay, and here we have our progress raw clips. Now we can select a clip and swipe to the right here or hit this little handle that pops up the metadata stack, which we can use to read the metadata that ships with the source progress files. So we can see the, um, the lens that has been used. We can see the uh, ISO, the white balance, and also the f-stop number and stuff like that for every clip selected. Pretty cool. Now let's head over to the color fix tab. And the first thing that we want to do here is get a view of our image, I guess. So here are the two most important hotkeys, alt and click and drag up down to zoom. So we can zoom out maybe a little bit in again and space drag to position the image anywhere we want. Okay. Now here in the top menu bar, we have a bunch of helper tools. For instance, scopes might have. Okay, here on the right, we have the version stack because Scratch allows us to create versions of our clips. Uh, let's say I have a dark version and now I hit the add version button and I want to also have a bright version and so on. 
Important is that uh, the version that is at the bottom is the one that's being rendered out. So let's delete this version and let's reset this one. Okay, uh, the version stack can be switched at its bottom to the metadata stack. So you can also view that metadata when you're inside color fix, which is quite helpful. On the right side, we have the layer stack, which we can either swipe in and out like this or hit the button up here. And in Scratch, you can work layer based. And when you create grading layers, as you can see, they grow from top to bottom. For now, we'll not use grading layers, but just do a quick primary grade in the next video, as a matter of fact. So let's hide the layer stack. You have the mini timeline here, which you can use to scrub through your footage. By the way, thanks to Ruven from the Zcam B2 group for providing this really nice looking footage. And down here, you have your grading tools. So you have all the tools here in these menus that you can use. But for now, let's look at the node menu. Now I say node menu when there actually is no node menu. The node menu is labeled QuickTime. And it's called node menu because, well, it has the base settings of the current node, which is a QuickTime node. If you're using, I don't know, red row footage or array row footage, this button will be labeled accordingly with red row or array row or Sony row, etc. Now ProRes raw is a QuickTime format, so this reads QuickTime here. And inside you have the raw settings for ProRes raw. And it starts with the color space and the EOTF. So right now uh, these clips are being debared to Rec 2020 and Panasonic V-Log. We can just change that by, yeah, let's select Panasonic v gamut instead. Or we could choose to go straight to Rec 709 and instead of V-Log, go to Gamma 2.4, like that. Gives us a pretty decent image right out of the box. And let me go to the next clip. We can also choose to go to something uh, rather exotic like uh, Alexa White Gamut and Array Lock C, which might make sense if I have grades or lookup tables stored that apply to this specific lock curve. Next to that, uh, we also have access to ISO, Kelvin and tint, so we can make the image warmer, colder, like that, or dial up the gain. Let me quickly reset these settings, okay? Now what you just saw me do is a clip by clip setting. So this one is now Rec 2020, Panasonic V-Log, and the first clip is still Rec 709. So before I go through each and every clip to change the settings, I can also do that in batches. This is the last thing we'll be looking at for this video. Head back to the construct and use Command or Control A to select all clips and enter the media browser. Now, the media browser looks rather boring, I know, but it's an incredibly powerful tool because you can do batch operations of any kind. Here in the base tab, I can, for instance, rename my clips or add scene and take information based on metadata such. In the grade tab I can batch load and export lookup tables from my clips. And here in the node menu, here we go again, it's labeled node, uh, we have the exact same debiring options that we earlier saw in the QuickTime menu in the color fix tab. But now when we change something here it applies to all clips selected. So I can tell all my clips to please be debayered to Panasonic v Gamut and also Panasonic v Log, or any other possible combination. And all the clips will be changed to that. Also changes that I do here in terms of ISO, Kelvin and Tint would be applied to all clips batch-wise simultaneously. Okay, that's it for a quick overview of Scratch and how to load the footage in and how to set up the debiring according to what your workflow needs. In the next video we will be creating a basic primary grade in Scratch. We'll also go over how to load lookup tables that you might already have and we will of course go over exporting or creating a lookup table from the grade that we created in Scratch to be used in an Atomos device or directly inside your camera for monitoring. 
Alright, see you there. Bye.